I'm here to talk about green hydrogen setup costs. Now, before we dive into it, let me ask you a question. What do you think is the biggest driver of the cost of green hydrogen? Is it the type of electrolyzer or the price of electricity or something else? Let me know your thoughts down below. When discussing the setup cost of a green hydrogen plant, it's important to first explain what setup cost actually means. This generally refers to the total installed cost, which includes the electrolyzer system, the balance of plants such as water treatment systems, power electronics, compression and drying equipment, cooling systems, as well as storage and transport infrastructure. It also covers the costs for site development, engineering, procurement, construction, grid, interconnection, permitting, and contingencies. Viewers should understand the distinction between capital expenditure CAPEX and operating expenditure OPEX and how both feed into the levelized cost of hydrogen LC. A significant portion of the setup cost comes from the electrolyzer technology itself. There are several types, including alkaline, proton exchange, membrane, PEM, and the emerging solid oxide electrolyzers S. Currently installed costs vary widely. Alkaline systems in many Western markets are around 2,000 United States dollars per kilowatt, while PEM systems are about 2,450 United States dollars per kilowatt. In China, alkaline electrolyzers can be much cheaper, with reported prices between 750 United States dollars and 1,300 per kilowatt. The differences are largely due to stack manufacturing costs, materials used, and operational flexibility. Global projections suggest these prices will continue to decline toward 2030 as technology improves and manufacturing scales up. The next category is electricity, costs, and availability. The price you pay for power. And the plant's capacity factor directly affect the LCOH. Plants co-located with wind or solar farms may face variable utilization rates. Whereas grid-connected systems must comply with strict additionality and time-matching rules in regions like the U.S. and E.U. to qualify as green today. Unsubsidized green hydrogen often falls in the USD 4 to 7 per kilogram range. But with cheap renewable power and government incentives, it can approach USD 2 to 3 per kilogram. Water use is another factor. Producing 1 kilogram of hydrogen requires about 9 liters of pure water chemically. But real-world plants typically need between 13 and 25 liters to account for purification losses. If seawater or brackish water is the source, desalination is required, which adds modest costs. Reverse osmosis desalination typically uses 3 to 5 kilowatt hours per cubic meter. And the total water cost is often in the range of US 0 0.302, 1.50 per cubic meter, translating into just a few cents per kilogram of hydrogen. Now let's discuss the balance of plant, which represents a major cost segment beyond the electrolyzer and water systems. This includes rectifiers, transformers, switchgear, cooling, and deionization equipment, drying systems, nitrogen purging setups, automation controls, and safety systems such as fire protection and hazard analysis provisions. These can add 30 to 60% or more to the base electrolyzer hardware cost. On top of that, hydrogen must be compressed for storage and transport, which consumes 2, 2, 4 kilowatt per kilogram for 350 bar systems and 3, 2, 7 kilowatt hours per kilogram for higher pressures. Storage options range from high pressure tanks and tube trailers for smaller volumes to underground salt caverns for large scale seasonal storage, which can be significantly more. For example, a study evaluating the economic potential of seasonal hydrogen storage in depleted gas fields in the Netherlands found that the costs of hydrogen range from U 1.292, 1.77 1 per kilogram, primarily driven by the cost of electricity and compression. The setup cost also encompasses site preparation, engineering, and permitting, land purchase or leasing, geotechnical surveys, road and utility access, grid interconnection studies, environmental assessments, and building construction all contribute to the capital bill. Projects typically include contingencies of 15 to 30 percent to account for unforeseen costs during construction. In addition to direct costs, there are indirect expenses like interest during construction, which can add another 5 to 15 percent. Some countries offer incentives for building local manufacturing capacity or for using domestic equipment, which can increase the initial capital costs but reduce future operations and maintenance expenses. Government policies and incentives can drastically change the financial picture. In the United States, the 45 volts production tax credit offers up to 3 United States dollars per kilogram for hydrogen with very low carbon intensity lasting for 10 years. 
In Canada, the Clean Hydrogen Investment Tax Credit can refund 15 to 40 percent of eligible capital costs depending on the project S emissions profile, and this incentive runs until 2034. Other regions offer renewable power credits or manufacturing subsidies, which can make the difference between a viable and unviable project. To understand the relative importance of these factors, consider a sample calculation for a 100 megawatt pump plant. This size is appropriate for a large-scale green hydrogen facility. We'll estimate the setup cost at 2450 United States dollars per kilowatt, which reflects current market prices for packaged electrolyzer systems. At full capacity, this plant produces 87,600 megawatt hours annually. Assuming a 25% capacity factor, the annual production is 21,900 megawatt. The levelized cost of hydrogen is calculated by dividing the total investment and operating costs over the plant's lifetime. With a lifespan of 20 years and a discount rate of 8%, the LCOH comes out to 4 United States dollars and 70 cents per kilogram. Now let's see how changes in key variables affect the final cost. First, consider the impact of electricity price. If renewable power costs only 30 United States dollars per megawatt hour instead of 60 United States dollars, the levelized cost drops to 3 United States dollars and 90 cents per kilogram, a nearly 17% reduction. This highlights the outsized influence of electricity on hydrogen production costs. Second, changes in the electrolyzer capital cost have a lesser effect. If we assume a 10% reduction, the LCOH falls only 6% to United States dollar umpod coma umpod per kilogram. This is because the electrolyzer accounts for a smaller portion of the overall plant capital cost. Third, plant utilization has an even smaller influence on LCOH. A 20% increase in capacity factor from 25% to 30% results in a less than 5% decrease in levelized costs. This is because higher utilization rates do UMT offset the additional electricity consumption from increased compression and other balanced cell plant requirements. Fourth, if we change the discount rate from 8% to 11%, the LCOH rises about 8% to 5 United States dollars and 10 cents per kilogram. This illustrates the sensitivity of levelized cost calculations to the discount rate used. Real world examples can help anchor these numbers. Major mega projects, such as the nine billion United States dollars Asian Development Bank-backed Philippines Green Hydrogen Project, which combines a one gigawatt offshore wind farm, a two gigawatt hydrogen storage facility, and a 250 ton per day green hydrogen production. Plants show how economies of scale and offtake agreements can bring down costs. Even when factoring in a 30% contingency for unforeseen expenses during construction, the estimated cost of one United States dollar and 50 cents per kilogram is highly competitive. Similarly, the 3 billion United States dollars MacArthur Green Hydrogen Project in Australia plans to leverage a 450 megawatt solar farm to produce green hydrogen at an estimated cost of 2 United States dollars per kilogram. These massive projects benefit from dedicated renewable generation assets, access to low-cost land, and long-term offtake contracts that spread capital costs over many years. On the smaller end of the spectrum, industrial projects like the 500 million United States dollars High Green Initiative in Louisiana pair green hydrogen production with existing facilities such as refineries, ammonia plants, or fertilizer manufacturers. These facilities have consistent energy demands and can use hydrogen as a feedstock or fuel, providing stable cash flows and potentially qualifying for generous tax credits in the U.S., for instance. The 150 million United States dollars Green Hydrogen Ohio project will supply 20 tons per day of low carbon hydrogen to an existing fertilizer facility under a 15 year contract. Levelized cost calculations for these industrial projects are more sensitive to electricity prices since they usually lack on site renewables. However, long term power purchase agreements can lock in stable input costs. Finally, a note. On permitting. In regions with streamlined approval processes and clear green hydrogen strategies, setup costs tend to be lower. For example, in Quebec, Canada, the government S1.8 billion United States dollars dollar hydrogen strategy includes plans to deploy 250 tons per day of green hydrogen production capacity by 2030. 
The province has abundant hydropower, a skilled workforce, and established networks for transporting hydrogen, all of which reduces the capital cost associated with connecting new production to markets. By comparison. Areas without dedicated policies may face longer timelines and higher costs for grid interconnection, safety upgrades, and environmental approvals. Overall, while Electrolyzer hardware grabs headlines, the largest levers in setup cost are electricity pricing, plant utilization, storage strategy, and available incentives. As technologies improve and manufacturing ramps up, along with supportive policies, we can expect levelized costs to trend downward. Time matching constraints and water use are important considerations, especially for grid-connected projects. Cost allocations across capital and operating expenditures depend on factors such as financing terms, the price of natural gas, and the plant's design. The mix of these factors varies by region, project size, and offtake agreements. Understanding the cost drivers allows policymakers and developers to focus on solutions that deliver the lowest levelized cost of hydrogen while maximizing local economic benefits. Let me know what questions you have in the comments below. Thanks for watching.